Alright, in chemistry we have a lot of equations to deal with and a lot of times we have to rearrange them to solve for what we're looking for. There's a ton of equations in chemistry. I mean, there's just, these, these are only a few of the equations you'll deal with in chemistry. And the trouble is, sometimes we don't want the equations in the form that they're written in. Sometimes we need a different form. And the question is, do we have to memorize all the different forms of each one of these equations? For instance, this first law of thermodynamics. What if I wanted to solve for Q? What if I wanted to solve for W? Do I have to memorize three equations? It was bad enough I had to memorize one, but now I've got three different forms of the same equation. So do I really need to do this? Well, luckily, we don't have to, because math is going to save us from a lot of extra memorization. Let's look at the first law of thermodynamics, and I want to solve it for W. All right, so what I'm going to do first, to be honest, it's a step you don't have to do. In fact, I'm even going to state this. It is a totally unnecessary step. But personally, I have a hard time thinking right to left. I'm used to doing left to right. So I always want my unknown to be on the left-hand side. So I took that delta E on the left-hand side and put it on the right. And I put the Q plus W that was on the right-hand side on the left-hand side. And that just makes my brain work a little less hard. Now what do we do? Well, I want the W by itself, so I need to get rid of the Q. So in order to move a variable from one side of the equal sign to the other, we need to do the opposite operation to both sides. To get rid of the Q, I'm going to subtract Q, because I know that Q minus Q is just equal to zero. But if I subtract Q from the left-hand side, I need to make sure I subtract from the right-hand side. And then I get my final equation, W equals delta E minus Q. All right, now let's look at the ideal gas law. Okay, in this case, I want to solve for N. And again, I'm going to do that same unnecessary step, but I like solving things from left to right. So in this case, it's not addition that the operation is. It's multiplication. I have N times RT. So to get rid of that, I'm going to have to do the opposite operation, and the opposite operation to multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide both sides by RT. RT divided by RT is simply 1, so my left-hand side simply becomes N. And my right-hand side is PV divided by the quantity RT. Okay, so we've undone addition with subtraction, we got rid of multiplication with division. Now this is a little bit more complicated because I've got division here. And I know the opposite of division is multiplication, but for this kind of problem, well, we're going to do it two different ways. This is my favorite way. In order to solve for something when I've got fractions involved, the first thing I like to do is wipe out all denominators by multiplication. So my denominator is V. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by V. So my left-hand side simply becomes V times D. My right-hand side is still the M divided by V, but now I'm multiplying the right-hand side times V over 1. Remember, anything divided by 1 is itself. I don't like to mix fractions and non-fractions when I'm multiplying because I get all confused, because now I can easily see that the V's divide out. So what I finally end up with is VD equals M. Oh wait, we're still not done. I need to solve for V. So I have V times D. Again, I'm going to do the opposite operation. So I'm going to divide both sides by D. And finally, I've got V is equal to M divided by D. This type of problem causes students the most problems because, well, to be honest, a lot of people don't like fractions. That's why I like this method because it just gets rid of the fractions right away. However, there is an alternative way of solving this equation. Either one will work. We have our equation and we're still solving for V. But now what I'm going to do is make everything fractions. So before I got rid of my fractions, now I'm going to make everything fractions. Well, the right-hand side of the equation already was a fraction, but the left-hand side, instead of D, I'm going to write it as D over 1, because again, D divided by 1 is still just equal to D. Now what I'm going to do is cross-multiply over the equal sign. 
So I'm going to have d times v equals m times 1. Let me do that again. d times v equals m times 1. Okay, m times 1 is just m, and again I've got dv equals m. I need to solve for v, so since we're still not done, and we'll do the opposite operation of multiplication, which is division. And finally, again, we get that v is equal to m divided by d. I admit, that's a lot of math. But if I had to also memorize all the different forms for all of these different equations, whew, you know, I'm going to even stop there. It's just too much. So we're going to rely on math to be able to rearrange our equations into the form that we really need for the particular problem we're facing.